Hi everybody, my name is Joe K. It's Joe K Music and welcome to another day in the underground. Today I am here with a very special guest, Darian Saffron. Darian, thanks for joining, man. What's up, Jamar? How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I, I want to dive right into it. We got a lot, lot to unpack today. For those of you that don't know, Darian Saffron, former Strange Music artist, I want to talk about what happened leading up to your signing with Strange. I want to talk about the story of being signed to Strange. And then I want to talk about what happened afterwards. I know there was a falling out uh, and some stuff that happened kind of behind the scenes and some of it very publicly. And then I also want to talk yeah. about what we're moving, uh, what we're looking at moving forward here, what kind of things you got in the works and what people can expect moving forward. Let's talk about prior to your signing with Strange Music. So what, what did that look like leading up to being signed? Did they approach you? Were you kind of... Uh, trying to get in with them. Tell me the story so, behind that. Basically, what happened with that is uh, the way I got to Strange was is there was an artist named Stevie Stone who just left Strange. But um, there was an artist named Stevie Stone, and he was uh, – I was – at the time, I was signed to a label named Notify out of St. Louis. And um, Notify had connection to Stevie through one of the studios in St. Louis called Fat Buddha. And – she didn't get Stevie. What happened was is she hired the, the the label I was under hired a production team to come and work with me on a few songs. That production team was the County Boys in St. Louis, which was Frizz, Tom Burns, and uh, and Rail. Now Frizz is Stevie Stone's hype man. So some of the songs that we ended up doing, Frizz ended up taking it to Stevie and showed him a song called Boo Thing back on his Two Birds, One Stone album. That record right there was, uh, or was it his two? I think it was his Two Birds, One Stone. Yeah, it was that one. That record right there was the first time Strange ever heard of me, but it was just a feature that I did for him. You know what I'm saying? So I did right. that feature and then, uh, and then that was our first time that we had ever, like, you know, crossed paths with Strange. And, uh, you know, it was cool or whatever. I was still under contract with the other label. Once that situation went full circle and it was done with, uh, Dave Weiner out of Strange at the time hit me right up. and was They were trying to swoop me up as soon as that was done with, you know. So uh, okay. at the time, I was actually homeless. I didn't, uh, I didn't have nowhere to stay at the time. I was staying in my homie crib. Uh, on and off, you know, whenever he was home or would open the door and stuff, but I was like basically like outside. So, you know, I just, I jumped on the first, the quickest, best opportunity I could have done at the time because I had no other, you know what I'm saying? No place to stay, you know? So yeah, that, that's basically how all that happened though. That I, it got, it, it got started from me doing that feature with Stevie on boot thing and then trickled on from there. That's how I met with strange initially. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I think you and, you and Stevie Stone together, I think, mesh really, really well. I mean, both your guys. Yeah, Stevie, that's, and, that's my big bro, man. Yeah. I, I love Stevie. I love Stevie Frizz and all that. I love all the artists over there. Yeah, I think you guys. I think you guys. Uh, your sounds mesh really well. Um, but I, but I think too, it's it's also interesting because I think your sound compared to you know as a as a solo artist compared to a lot of the art, other artists on Strange, it's a different it's a different sound. I mean. It's not the normal or the typical um, uh, sound that you would get from or what you would think to get from a strange music artist. So what did that look yeah. like when they approached you? And like, what was that conversation like bringing you into the fold? And what kind of things were they telling you? Like, what was going to be special about you being on strange, I guess? Well, I could tell you this much from the jump. When I signed the strange initially, the conversation that me, Dave Weiner, and Travis O'Gwen had in that office before I signed anything, I told them I was like, I've been with many labels before y'all that have instantly seen me. They saw that I sing, and they saw that I'm white, and they instantly tried to push the Justin Bieber agenda. They instantly tried to go pop. They instantly tried to do this. And I told them, I'm like, listen, that is not who I am. We need to do this organically. I want to start in the street and I want to build respect from the bottom with mixed. I, I wanted to do it organically like Drake did it. I wanted to do that, drop mixtapes, get the street love, get people, get the respect out of the cities, really get in touch with the community and the streets, not necessarily be gangster or be hood or anything, but just speak to the community, speak to the streets first and then go pop after. 
that I told him I was like, that's the way I want to do it. And I felt like, you know, I felt like it being strange music, quote unquote, there was no real, you know, need to really explain this since they stand for artists being themselves and yep. going away from major label, all that, you know, like that's what they stand for. So in the back of my head, I was like, oh, I, I don't got to worry. Like they're going to let me do that. Right. So that was the that was the conversation. Though. So when, when I fit in the strange, it was like that. But they also let me know, you know, like they they saw me as somebody that was going to help bring strange into the mainstream, you know, because strange is real underground. So that's why they started strange main and they had McKenzie and Nicole, me and above waves. They were trying to see what happened was is, is, is when tech did, did hood go crazy. And when he did the song with Kendrick, yep, that's when they got a taste from leaving that underground world. And, you know, really like you got to think, about it from Travis's perspective. Travis is a businessman. He a money man. Yep. So he's going to, he, he's not really, he don't care. To, and, I, and I'm not going to say like, I'm not going to put words in his mouth and say that he doesn't, but I could tell just as, as my own opinion, I don't think he cares anything about no culture. He doesn't care anything about the music. He doesn't care. He's just the businessman in the back. And he makes sure the business gets handled how the business should be handled, which is all good. That's his job, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, I don't think, you know what I'm saying, he doesn't understand. When, when when he got that taste of that hood go crazy money and, you know, him being the boss, really seeing the numbers, looking at all the numbers like, hold on, we doing this for underground. But when we just did this pop song over here, you know, that mm -hmm. made so much money. So if you if you really pay attention, you can even listen to text music. And, and, and it's like almost like once that pop single came out everything started to shift like they were trying to get another one and it wasn't tech and it wasn't none of the artists but you know in the background you had people business people in the background that were like almost encouraging hey we want to we need to make more of this because look at the numbers over here which is cool i get it he don't understand culture he don't get like yo you need to like feed the streets too to keep your cultivation you know what i'm saying you need yeah. to have some type of cultivated purpose with what you do. And the thing about tech is, is, is they, they very much understood tech can't do that because he stands against that. That's what his whole image stands against this. So let's make another branch on the label where we bring people like me, McKenzie and blah, blah, blah. So I told him from the jump, I was like, I don't mind. I, I, I already see myself being a mainstream artist. That's fine. But I don't want to come in on Justin Bieber. I would rather come in like Chris Brown, Drake, you know, be fit in that category. You could put me up next to them, but they were, but they were trying to paint this, even though they said, yeah, we're going to let you do that. You could be your own artist and you know, all that. If they didn't agree with it, they just wouldn't push it. And they didn't agree with nothing that wasn't to me personally. It was stuff that I knew that my generation wouldn't listen to. And it's something I knew damn sure that strange music fan base wasn't going to listen to. There was a lot of things we put out that I didn't, I just didn't like it. I was like, this is lame. Like, this is, nobody wants to hear this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not like, I was like, oh, like, I want to be a hard gangster. Once again, it had nothing about me wanting to be a gangster. It was just about the fact that I knew that it was corny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would make a whole bunch of songs and they would pick the corniest ones and roll with that. And I'm like, man, like. I know strange music fans ain't going to like this. They getting this idea in their head of what I am. So you messing my brand up on that side. Then on top of that, if I go back to, you know, my generation, they don't like it because it's corny. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro. And, and like, yeah, I wrote it. But like I said, they would pick what right. it, they right. would just pick what they thought was, was right. I'm like, bro, that's right. not were, it. It's they just, were they were picking and choosing what to what to put out and how to, you know, how they were going to market you and brand you, I guess, as an artist. And I Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember that time period. And it's it's funny you bring up Hood Go Crazy because that particular song, I I I've been I've been vlogging on and off for a long time. And I have a vlog on that song, <laughs> like talking exactly about what you just mentioned. So the fact that yeah. you bring up that song is really funny because I, I felt like that was the turning point. That was the turning yeah, point. Yeah, that really was. As, that, as a, that, as that a really fan. was. That, that really was. It was because they, they, they got a taste of, you know, when you get fed, you know what I'm saying, cereal all your life, and then you, 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 you go to your aunt's house and you get fish filet and, and lobster and shit, you be like, oh, shit, 
the fuck, fuck that cereal. Like that's basically in their head. Like I get it. Trust me, I yeah. get the business. I'm not mad at the business. I get people trying to look at these numbers and trying to understand how they can re, re reinvent. You know what I'm saying? A system and a, and a bag out of something. But it's like you, if you're not a part of the culture though, and you don't understand what makes these streets move. As in musically and 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 mentality wise, and what's making these kids, and not even just these kids, but these streets as a culture move, then don't try to, then don't try to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't try to be so ignorant to the fact that you ignorant. So you get what I'm saying? Oh, abs absolutely, absolutely. I'm definitely following. So you you get signed by strange music it's i think it's what october of 2015 if i'm not mistaken um is when you got signed tell me about the the projects you're putting out at that point right so you kind of alluded to it before you're pumping out a bunch of music they're kind of picking and choosing what they're you know what they're putting out tell me about the experience you know creating creating the projects and what that looked like well um so my projects, you know, the brilliant EP yep. that when I put that out, the one that had all for you on there and a couple other ones that was already done before I even went to strange. Those songs have been done for like almost a year. That was just something I was like, yo, let's just put this out. Let's just give it, you know, whatever. After we did that, I was like, okay, now let's go on to something else. Let, let's put out another project. So I did call laws, the mixtape, but they wasn't, they didn't like it. They, they, they didn't like any of it. So they didn't help me really with none of it. They gave me like, a, I think they gave, I, don't quote me on this. I believe they gave me like a small budget for a couple of, I think one budget was like a thousand dollars to, it was something like that to give a promoter that I knew help to blow up, you know, these songs mm -hmm. because I know that he's really good at promoting. And, uh, and, and like, I think that, and, and then we might've done, we done like two videos for the pro, no, three. I think we did three videos for the project, three or four which is cool. I'm cool on all that part. The only thing that made me mad is the number one single that I said we should have went with off of that tape, which was Money and Time, MNT. I said, yo, we need to go with this one because it's it's turned up. It's 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 a club record. The kids want to hear this. We need to do this first. You know what I mean? So we did that. And uh, they never put that video out. And they only went with the other songs that they wanted to go with, the slower singing ones. And I was like, that's cool but it's not going to pick up what, and the thing that made me mad is, you know, I understand me understanding business that these budgets that they're putting towards that they're running with, I understand that it is basically in a sense, running up a bill in my name that I don't agree with the spending. I don't agree with how you're spending the money for one, which is, I mean, this happens all the time with artists and labels. Yep. It's understandable, but I don't agree with how it's being spent. And then, it comes back on me like I like like they they would look at me like okay like like look at it like this um if I gave you a video game right like let's say one of the best video games if I gave you Call of Duty right the brand new Call of Duty right let's say Call of Duty is dope as hell and and, and you're like yo this is a good game I got it on PS4 here you go they give you the controller. And they're like, all right, go, go go play with it. But they're like, oh, this game is trash. And you're like, no, it's not. Here, play with this controller. But they pick up an Xbox controller, and they want to play with the Xbox controller. But it don't work. So they're like, see, I told you this was trash. And it's like, no, you're not using the right controller. You're you're completely not lit. You're not, you're not paying attention. You're not even playing it right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what used to really get on my nerves. And, 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 and it's really just a lot of built-up situations just like that, that, made me tip to the point to where it was like okay it's better off on me to just go off on my own and 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 do that than let y'all continuously mess my brand up to the point to where people come to darian and think that darian comes with just generic popcorn bubblegum regular music like that's not what i wanted I, I wanted my story to be told rated r and they were doing it very pg you know what i'm saying they weren't giving people the whole movie and i liked it yeah, that's that's very interesting to me too, especially because I mean the the core foundation as a strange music fan and a longtime listener of strange music, it's it, the individuality of the artist is something that they've seemingly always said that they were pushing. You know, like everybody's unique and everybody has their own style and their own sound. And as they were signing all these different acts, that was really what was pushed on on the fans at right. least. And I, I find it very interesting that. 
um, you know, you as the artist were feeling like they weren't allowing you to really share your story the way that, you know, you would have preferred it. What, exactly. what exactly didn't they like about, you know, what you were, what you were creating? Like what, like you said, they were I'll put kind it of this, picking I'll and choosing. I'll put it this simple. It's this simple. If, how, how old are you? Uh, 31. You're 31. So imagine what, what was going on in high school for you? Oh man, man. We had Kanye was big um Jay-Z what level was, of kanye oh man we're talking you're talking about so, you're talking about jesus walk kanye so you know I'm, I'm thinking back and actually i think freshman year was when we had jesus walks and then we had like stronger was like my senior year like you know all those okay. hits that were all right coming i get where out, you like, at then I get, yep. I get where you at okay so take this take this analogy for example if you how old are your parents oh man late 50s Okay, so if you brought a Kanye album to them in high school, they wouldn't understand or comprehend why it was dope. They don't understand why that what he's saying is dope the way it's dope to you, the same way that Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder and this, this and that and the third was dope to them, the same way that they parents of your parents didn't understand why Michael Jackson was dope instead of Frank Sinatra and, uh, uh, and artists like that to them. There is a generational gap of understanding that in Strange, what's being run, see, the thing about Strange Music is, is they built a, a, uh, of, uh, uh, they built a system on a fan base of people that are collectively engaged with a old format of music that they are still able to make money of today. So they look at that and they calculate the numbers because they're not cultured. They just look at numbers. They look at the numbers and they say, oh, this is working, but they don't understand that they're targeting a certain base of people that you're not what they wanted, the strange main, what they were trying to get to, what I was trying to explain to them is, yo, if you want this, you can't do it like this. They don't want this. Just there's a reason why strange music fans don't like what everybody else likes. And there's a reason why what mainstream people listen to nine times out of 10 isn't strange music. You know what I'm right. saying? So I was trying to explain to them that generational gap. And I was like, listen, I understand that if it's not bar bars, like a certain type of bars, you think that is not going to be dope to the people. But I'm like, listen, what these kids is on, though, you got to understand it's a different wave. Like, we got to try to... And my th- like I said, like my thing was like, even if they just wanted me to sing, and that's it completely, if the singing, if, if the songs that they would have picked would have been a, to go with would have been a little harder, a little doper, I would have been cool with it. But it's like all the real dope stuff that I came up with got swept under the rug every time. It was like, no, nah, not not really. No, nah, nah, not that one. And it, like I said before, like my biggest, one of the biggest pet peeves of mine was off of Car Laws. And I told them when well, we should have did Money and Time as a single. They did the video, never put it out, and only pushed and did other songs on that album that were slow and boring. And I was like, they're good. They're cool songs, mm-hmm. but they're boring. Nobody wants to hear this. For the first one, if, if, if I was, if me, myself, and I was to, to turn on a new artist that I don't know, I don't want to hear no slow song. I want to hear him get me engaged with him first. I want to, I want to like, like, oh, he's snapping, he's going off. Then I go check out his other music right. and be like, oh, he's an artist. He can sing, he's slow and all that nice shit. Great. Yeah. But until you get them engaged and reel them in, you can't just come to them slow dancing because this isn't the fucking 90s. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they don't want that shit. Yeah, I, I think that's really interesting, too. And you, you mentioned something earlier, too, around, you know, just kind of the difference in opinion on, on what they were what they were pouring money into compared to what you would have, you know, wished they were pouring money into from a, you know, from from an individual artist standpoint and what you were producing at the time. Um, what what did that look like uh, from a like uh, a partnership standpoint when they're pumping this money into these different songs. Like how was the deal structured in general? Was it, you know, Hey, we're going to, when you sign the strange, we're going to give you signed, X amount of videos. When I signed, I have no idea. I have no idea because when I signed, like I said, I was homeless. I didn't have mm. no bread. So I literally like, all I knew is that they were signing me. They were going to give me $2,000 up front. And that was going to be my events. And that was going to be enough to get me a crib to stay in. You know what I'm saying? They paid me $800 a month in per diem. And I was cool with that. 
and I didn't really read nothing else. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it was just like, it was just like, like I said, like me just expecting that this is just really a, a learning curve for me because it just shows you that no matter what people's brand is, no matter what mask people have on their face to show you like, oh, this is, this is, uh, this is what it is over here. Like if that paperwork is shisty, like I honestly don't ever want to sign to anything again because it's just like, for one, what's the point nowadays? It just shows you that no matter what type of mask people wear on their face, and I'm not saying that, you know, that everything is so super shisty over there or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, no matter what image you believe people might have, they will, they'll snake you if they can, you know? So, you know. So they give you the, the $2,000 signing bonus. And, and I think a lot of it and a lot of the appeal for a lot of artists is, you know, aside from just the overall excitement of like, hey, this is a well-known, you know, this is a well-known record label. And, you know, they seemingly have their stuff together. Like, why would, why would I turn this down? But I, I think that's the initial allure. But when it comes down to the actual nitty gritty of the deal, and mm -hmm. a lot of people are in this in a very similar boat, man. Like what your your situation, as unique as your situation is, a lot of artists struggle, you know, and, and they're looking to get signed because they're looking for those opportunities that are going to help take them to the next level. And I'm sure that's what you were seeing, you know, and thinking when you were signing the strange at the time too. And, yeah. um, you know, realistically, what, what are you able to do with a $2,000 signing bonus and an $800 per diem? Right. I mean, you got to look at it like this too. I mean, one of the, one of the people I had used to look at my contract and stuff, he used to tell me, he was like, how are they paying you $800 a month? But then they, okay. So here's another thing that used to really make me upset about the situation. I'm not, I am not obligated to record in their studio, but they highly recommend that I recorded in their studio because they want the best quality for what they put out. And they don't want no, no low budget, like, oh, it's not in the best studio. Like they want everything to sound top quality, which is a good reason. The only thing I didn't like is that at that studio, the mixing engineer just couldn't get the sound right that I wanted for one. Number two, I didn't like how much it cost. It cost like, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was about 250 an hour or something like that. Like the, the mm. studio bills was crazy. And, and, and this is the thing, like I said before, they'll tell you you can do what you want to do, but if you don't do it the way they want you to do it, they not going to fuck with it. So you can do it, but there's been so many things that I'll go, you know what I'm saying, record and I'll bring it to them and they'll really just be like, oh, well, you need to come down to Kansas City and re-record it here. And I'm like, why? You know what I'm saying? And then you got to look at it like that. Like, how are y'all paying me 800 a month? But y'all really, y'all, y'all really feel like if I don't go to that studio and record for real, y'all really ain't going to put as much time and dedication as y'all would put as y'all need to. You know what I'm saying? Y'all. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, they telling you, oh, don't drop anything. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, so I can't keep my momentum going. So I'm really obligated to you to, 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 to give you the, to, to really like, so basically it's like you saying you can record anywhere. But if you don't record here, we not really gonna push your shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Something like that. So it'll be like, so it'll be like, okay, then, then then you go out there and you like, okay, I'm getting 800 a month, but my studio built for one day, damn near a thousand dollars. Like, how does that make <laughs> sense? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, it's like, and, and then they would they they have you there, like they'll put the schedule on you, like have the people pick you up. All right, you gotta be there from nine to nine to five. Like they'll put you, you gotta be there at nine, and like they'll pick you up, take you to the studio, and you stay there till five. They work nine to five, and they done type shit. I don't even like that anyway. I like going to the studio. I be in the studio. I, I record and mix, produce everything myself now. Everything, 100%. After this situation, I record, mix, produce everything myself at the crib, just fine. But I don't like feeling like I'm at work when I'm I, in the studio. Yeah, you know? yeah. I can I can see how that could, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> slow down the creativity and really stifle your your creativity at that point i've i've heard rumors that you know they shut down the studio at like five o'clock or whatever or like some like early hour yeah. of the day is that is yeah. that true yeah yeah they shut that shit down the only time it ever stays open later is if tech maybe wants to stay later and and do some shit if tech say you want to do something yeah they're gonna he gonna make that shit happen and make them stay but you know it, it ain't even no that's not even a big issue, though. You know, I won't. Mm -hmm. That's not nothing I was really worried about like that. I was more worried about the fact, you know, what I'm saying, I just wanted that freedom of creativity 
to be right. acknowledged more than anything. That's the thing. Like a lot of those artists over there have dope ass records. Stevie Stone had crazy ass records. JL had dope ass records that were on their album that were not pushed as singles that literally determined the outcome of their album. Like, you know what I'm saying? It determines the whole thing. And you know, like, I know Stevie, he been trying to like do, he been trying to get towards a certain crowd. And a lot of them artists, they're trying to get towards a certain crowd because they know that, you know what I'm saying? The strange music fan base is cool, but it's a cultivated fan base. It doesn't grow. It is what it is. It's going to stay like that. Do you want to grow on from being on top of that? That's tech's fan base. It's not their fan base. They're just there for tech. And then you're there too. So it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's like mm -hmm. they wanted to build their own. I wanted to build my own, but the, the marketing just was not there at all. And, and, and I know I'm not going to say no names, but I know many artists over there that feel that way about all their projects and they be mad. Like they be pissed off. But, you know, I feel like out of everybody, the funny thing is, and I say this all the time, Trav, I don't think he understand the culture. He just a businessman. So I'm not mad at him. I'm just mad that the idea of strange represents something that it doesn't back what it says. You know what I'm saying? It stands for something. All of the people love strange for this idea of what it is. And in actuality, you scamming them with the with the uh what's the word with this facade that you put up like yeah this is what we do for artists over here this is like it's like you're putting your hands up like a movement this is a movement against major label bullshit but in all actuality you pulling major label bullshit on your artists you know what i'm saying that's the only thing i didn't like so when i stood up and i said something you know a lot the funny thing is all these art all these fans that was like oh darian Saffron is a pussy. He's a little strange. Oh, what are you doing? Strange, just whiny singer, all that shit. Out of everybody on the label, I might have been the hothead to just jump out my seat and do it, but I was the realest one to just come out and be like, damn, so y'all really like just doing y'all fans like this, you know, telling them that it's this when it's really this, and you gonna let and you gonna bring these artists that signed to y'all that because because me. Because me, I didn't even have that much knowledge on Strange when I signed to Strange. I knew who Tech 9 was, but I didn't, I wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't bump mm -hmm. Tech every day. I didn't bump Strange. I, I, I didn't. Like, that wasn't my go-to. That's just, that was just an opportunity for me. And I was like, all right, let's work over here, see what we can do with this situation. And I still, like I said, got love for all of them. I even got love for Trav. I don't even hate Trav for nothing that he, I, like I said, I just think he don't understand that he is miscommunications, that he don't understand a lot of things, like culture-wise, on how to do things that he just worried about the business. He just worried about the numbers and, and that, and that, and that, and that falls really bad with a label that's supposed to worry more about culture than numbers. That's the whole point. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, you're not, you're not the first person to, to mention that, you know, and I, I think everything you're saying, it's stuff that people have probably heard before, you know, and on one hand you have, you have Travis and he's the, the business guy. He's the one, he's in charge of the numbers, making sure that people are getting marketed and that ultimately the label's making money so that they can continue to, you know, support the artist or support new artists or different ventures that strange music is looking to do. On the other hand, you have, you have tech who, who is partial owner, right? So I think that's the, that's the hard part in all of this. It's a lot of people are there because of tech. I think you're absolutely right. You know, in that regard, but I've discovered a lot of really good artists just from, you know, initially, piquing that interest from you know from seeing tech and how he moves and just how he conducts himself as an artist and as a person um but it's kind of like a like almost like a jacqueline hyde type of situation where you have tech on one side and and travis on the other and i, I feel like it's really easy to to demonize the the business guy right it's also mm -hmm. easy to say like well where the heck is tech in all of this um as far as your time there at the label, are those the exact same roles that you saw kind of playing out there? And was was tech there like helping the artist or like giving advice to artists? Like what role did tech play while you were at Strange Music? I'm gonna I'm be real with you. And if tech heard this, then, then you know, it is what it is because I haven't spoken to tech in a long time. But I will say publicly that, uh, you know, I hope he's doing all right. I hope he's good, you know. I love him, got, got love for him, him and Chris and everybody up there. But uh, I will say that I personally, as an artist, I understand that there's nothing he can do. To a certain extent, his hands be tied. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know what it is 
person. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know Tex hands be tied. I don't know why, but they tied. I don't know why. I love him, and I know that he love all his artists, and I know that he really want to ride for them. But I know his hands be tied for some reason. But I want, I want to let him know, like, I wish that he would stand up just a little more behind the scenes to stand up for what his face is representing. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's just that simple. Like, I mean, I'm not going to say that he let bullshit just go on, but he sure, he sure as hell will, will, you know what I'm saying? The drama, he don't, I, he seemed like somebody who don't really like drama and would probably just be like, all right, let, well, I'll wait till that shit blow over. I'll talk to them later. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it come down to the point where it's like, bro, like, you big OG to a lot of them artists over there, you know, especially people like JL and, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like that whole Div Kids crew over there, like they, like that, that man is like their hero. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they look up to that man. So when you finally meet him and you get to know him, it's like, you know, some fuck shit going on with people that really fuck with you, that really love you, bro. Like that, they really care about you and, and would literally, like if we had it, give it to you type shit, just off of the energy of who you are. Like I said, tech, they, uh, he musically, He's a genius. I already know that. But but I fucked with Tech because he was a good dude. You understand? I could tell he a good dude. He got a good heart and, and he and he don't got no 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 maliciousness in his heart. He's just a good dude. Just like the same thing I felt about Brother Lynch. He was a good dude. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. can tell when people just good dudes. And I and I know that Tech is not a, a is not a businessman. He do music. He's not a businessman. I wouldn't say that he be on that business heavy. He just want to go and do his music. But at the same time, you know where you you know where you came from, and you know where a lot of your artists come from, and you know that you know that we don't play that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to Tech. Tech know that a lot of artists they where where we from? Tech, where you from, bro? Where we from? As in as in a struggle in general. You know what I'm saying? From a struggling place where we didn't have shit and we had to go get what we got. You know what I'm saying? We don't we don't play that. We, if, if somebody messes with people that we fuck with, we don't play that shit, and, and that shit get that shit get addressed. I just want him to address some more shit or at least stand up behind the scenes to certain situations and be like, because, you know, there have been plenty of times I showed him my record. And he's like, man, they don't know what they're talking about. You do you. But he will never tell them that. It's like, bro, you tell them that. And then maybe this thing will go a little different. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, man, I, I don't know why I feel like his hands are tied, but but I love Tech, man. He, he a good dude, man. I hope he doing all right because I ain't spoke to him in a minute. So I've been doing me. I've been, like I said, I've been dropping. I've been, I've been, I'm going to get my stuff together to drop. So, you know, I've been putting my money together, getting my dominoes ready. But that's what I feel with Tech, though. That's the same sentiment I keep hearing from all the artists on Strange. It's um, a lot of them appreciate Tech. A lot of them, you know, they know Tech has, they've said exactly the same thing you said, man. Like, Tech's got a great heart. Um, you know, I think he genuinely cares, uh, especially about the art. But when it comes to that business side, he seems to kind of be a very, he's, he's, he is, he's very hands off. And, you know, that's because hey. I think he's given, he's given, you know, Trav uh, a lot of, a lot of power. Uh, in all oh, of yeah. This. I don't know what's going on, but I know his hands are tied about some. I don't know what it is yeah. and it's not my business and I don't even want to get into it. But I feel yeah. like there's something that's, uh, there's some type of situation there, man, where tech, like, I know he want to say stuff, man, because tech is not, man, man, tech ain't no bitch, man. Tech ain't no hope, you know what I'm saying? So I don't understand why he sit there and let shit go on the way it go on when he knows some of that shit be fucked up, yeah. you know? And, and shit, I don't even, I, I wouldn't even speak on certain shit, but nice. shit, motherfuckers be getting done dirty even, and he he know exactly so, what's been, what what has happened. So he, he need to go ahead and just have them conversations, man. She a grown ass man, he could do that shit. So let's, let's now, there let's, is. let's talk a little bit about the, the falling out um and kind of what what happened as you were departing um i guess one thing to clear up here when when did your your contract officially end with strange do you do you know like the exact date or approximately the exact date that that contract so as over? far as i'm concerned as far as i know my contract is up when i signed it on my birthday this year so on june 2nd i'm out 100 percent. i'm good that's that's as far as i know i might have i might probably have see now they 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 claiming that, that I think I think they claim that I owe them like two hundred fifty to four hundred thousand. It's around that. It's two hundred fifty to four hundred. 
One of them is what I owe them, four hundred thousand dollars or something like that. That I don't know the exact number, but it was around two fifty to four hundred. It was in between there. So that's what they claim, and I owe them. Me personally, I call complete bullshit on that because I feel like if somebody as smart as Travis O'Gwen spent four hundred thousand dollars and you didn't blow an artist up when these drug dealers out here on the street are spending ten thousand and blowing up, then you just don't need to be in music at all then you spent 400k and that all went to tax write-off then yeah you need to just not do that you know what i'm saying but you know um another thing that really made me mad about the situation was shit like that like okay they say they say 400,000 right or, or whatever the number is whatever i think it's around that number a lot of that number like i said came from shit that i didn't want to do that i didn't agree with and uh there was i remember this one time when uh when uh the brilliant ep was out and they were going with the first single that they were going to really like push now that time they listened to me and they chose that me to be one of the singles that they went to the radio with now i told them i was like listen don't go to radio that's dumb go to the internet blow it up on the internet and then the radio will pick it up that only makes sense according to what they said now this is this is I haven't looked at the actual the, the actual sheet that, that shows the legitimate number. So I can't give you an actual quoted number. But what I can say is that from conversations that we have had, I have heard them say, oh, that radio campaign was almost $200,000. I'm like, why? Why was that radio? Why would you even do that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why would you even spend that money there? And it's not. So you didn't have to do that. So were they were they like letting you sign off on any of these things? You mentioned no, earlier, just kind of no. they just did what they did. Hell and... no, they just go and do it. Wow. And then they give you the bill at the end of the year. That's what I'm saying. And that's what all the labels do. Though. All the labels do that dumb shit. I don't like that, man. Like, see, see me especially now. Like, I'm so business oriented now to the point to where I'm like, okay, listen, we not signing no deal for no album, none of that. We can do single deals, and we can do things where in contractually, I'm a part of all spending habits that happen all, all, all the expenses that get paid anything that goes towards something that i gotta recoup i have to sign off on this shit and agree that's what's gonna be in all my next contracts because motherfucker ain't nobody gonna come in here and spend my money on dumb shit then i'm like look bro you gonna fail doing this shit you're not gonna go on walmart with my ps4 and buy an xbox 360 <laughs> controller for two hundred thousand dollars and try to play my game no nah, this shit ain't gonna work and then say that i bought the 360 controller and i gotta pay it back that's dumb you know what i'm saying but once again, that's the business. I'll take that L, to be honest with you. I don't mind paying the money back once I get it. I just told him, I was like, listen, I got I to gotta go do this on my own and be free. I don't care if I went from having 50,000, 100,000, 700,000 views with tech on a song of all strange music fans to going to rebranding myself to my own shit and gaining my actual fans and building it from the bottom up. I'd rather do that 100%. For those of you that don't know, and for people that, I don't know, were under a rock this entire time, a lot of the artists that once they sign the strange music, they're given a chain is one of their uh, gifts for signing to the label. Can you tell the people a little bit about your experience with the with the chain? What's the story behind that, man? So basically what happened is this, and I'm not going to say that it was intentional, but I'm just going to state the fact of what it was. At Red Rock is when they gave me my chain. The chain that they gave me on stage was Stevie Stone chain. They told me that my chain was coming. We waited hell and my shit never came. That's all I'm going to say. We waited. That motherfucker never. He, you know what? I think he did show me the gold because I, I told him I wanted gold and diamond. I didn't want silver. I, don't, I wanted gold and diamond, gold diamonds. You know what I'm saying? Real flossy bossy shit. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't want a big ass 2000 one chain either i just wanted a cool little you know something cool with, with the pendant so they showed me the pendant they say oh this is the pendant i've seen the pendant before but they were like oh we're waiting on the chain but i never got it i never got a chain ever that that chain like there was a legitimate staged chain giving at red rocks that was staged like a motherfucker but like i said i can't say intentionally that was that was stevie stone chain bro that was stevie shit but I, I like I said, I, I'm not saying intentionally they did that shit on purpose. Like, oh, we never going to give him his chain. Fuck him. But I know that I never received it, you know, and we waited a long little minute, too. We kept asking, hey, can we get that chain, though? Like, I do want to rock that motherfucker. That shit will look nice. 
you know. But yeah, <laughs> no, I, I ain't never got that shit. Dang, dang, man, that's crazy. That's wild, man. That's absolutely yeah, wild. I've, I've heard rumors about it, but I don't know if anyone, I don't know if anyone's actually ever heard it directly from the source. You know what I mean? It was always just kind of like hearsay um, from people around the underground and stuff. So that's, yeah, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. There was a situation that happened a while back on Instagram, and I want to, I want to hear directly from you, kind of what happened there. I know oh. there was some, some kind of beef with uh, Travis's wife on Instagram and some stuff that happened there that kind of blew up. Can you just share a little bit about that story? Um, that was just that, that was just that was just when I that was just when I when I had enough and 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 went public with this shit honestly and and I mean that was just like me being immature and young. I mean when it comes to doing it publicly, but at the same time I was on some like the same thing I said earlier. Like you got all these fans believing in this facade, and I I don't think that's right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like cause, cause it's not like they they they. It's not like they branding themselves towards people, regular people. You know what I'm saying? They branding themselves towards people with mental illnesses and and people that want to kill themselves and 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 the people that you know what I'm saying like literally like people that have that they need this music for a coping mechanism to live their life. Like people that are really fucked up about their life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, like don't just manipulate these people because you know that they you know what I'm saying, at a low point of their life and you know you can take advantage of these people's minds and you can give them this facade and they can be like, yeah, I, I rock with Strange because they're they're this, this, and that. And it's like, no, nah, like, y'all not doing that though. So so pr practice what you preach for these people that that need something real to believe in. Don't give them some fake shit to believe in, you know what I'm saying? But that was just me, like, doing that shit. And then when Travis Travis's wife came in and said that, I didn't even know that was Travis's wife at first. I just answered i was like because there was a whole bunch of fans you know that they just think they know they don't know like they're not there and what, so, you what know, did like she, she started going off what what did she was, what did she say exactly i forgot i forgot what she said it was so long ago i just i just it was she said something long and then i said something wrong it was, mm -hmm. i was just saying stuff back to you some people have said that you were shelved some people said like because of some of the choices you made you kind of put yourself in a crappy situation what ended up happening there? Was it a combination of, honestly, like looking back on it in hindsight being 2020, was it a combination of both? Um, what was it that was kind of the I final mean, straw that you're like, hey, we're not putting any more music out for you? I mean, you could really, you could say, uh, you could say that it's 2020 because like I said, I could have, I could have handled that situation more civilly and, 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 and you know what I'm saying, went behind the scenes and said, okay, look, y'all, I don't like how this is moving, but we need to have a meeting face to face and blah, blah, blah. You know, my, my today businessman inside of me would have done that because, you know, playing chess, you know, they, they are holding a lot of chess pieces right now and blocking my moves. But, you know, at the same, not probably not intentionally, but I'm just saying off contractually, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's happening. But, you know, um, I would say that, uh, like, yeah, yeah like it's, it's half and half, like, is that, but then at the same time, you know, I was not going to change the artist that I was and the artist that I was trying to be. See, what really set it off for me to really do that was after Call Laws, it came out, you know, I've never dropped the album on Strange yet. I haven't dropped one full album. Like an just album has never came out for me. Yeah, just yeah I've never dropped a legitimate album. And that like, I've given them like so much music that I was like, yo, this is dope. Like we need to move with this. So, there was an album that I came out with on my own called Nazia, N-A-S-I-A-A, -A, not a singer, I'm an artist, standing for, I'm not just a singer, I'm an artist, I rap, I produce. The whole album, I produced myself, recorded it myself, mixed myself. And that's the first time I stepped away from the label and said, listen, I'm doing this on my own. I don't need your help. I don't need $50,000 beats from this guy over here, and I don't need $100,000 videos from you guys over there. I'm going to do it all myself, I'm going to get it, and, and, and I'm going to do it. And I did it, and you know, like, my biggest thing was that they they would always procrastinate so much on projects till the music wasn't even in style anymore. Like we would have like this happens to all the artists, JL, me, Gotta Miss Yubi, everybody. So I was like, you know, I had the album and I'm like, listen, yeah, I got the album, but I'm not trying to wait a whole year for us to do this. So I told him even the email multiple times. I was like, I was like, let's try to get a date where we specifically, you know, like we meet up and we do this. We do like the dates kept getting pushed back. You know what I'm saying? I had videos made up. I shot about four videos with my own budget, with my own money, that they were like, oh, like, like they were just like being complicated with it. And, you know, I was like, okay, well, 
I want to do it like this. This is my album. This is all me. Like, I want to put this out. And, and it was just, it was too much procrastination going on. And I was like, bro, like, it, it, it went to the point to where like three, four, five months went by. And it's like, no, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not, I'm not just going to sit. Like, I can't do that no more. Like, it's time to move. You know what I'm saying? Now, at the same time, me being a further businessman as I am today, you know, it's good to plan. But at the same time, you, with t- I understand my generation. You can plan, but you need to be working while you plan. You know what I'm saying? You need to be dropping while you while you working on what you're going to drop. You need to be dropping little mm-hmm. shit. You need to be constantly giving content. And I didn't like the system at the time that they were having. Everything was going through them. Like, it had to be dropped at a specific time. You couldn't drop on your own. And I was telling them, like, that's dumb. Like, y'all should at least let your artists drop little shit on the side. Now, they was letting me do it. But like I said, they wasn't putting no budget behind it. So really, like, the, the yeah. problem would be is that I would drop all this shit that I thought was dope on my own, but no budget behind it. Which, by the way, mind you, I'm only getting 800 a month from them. That's not shit. So, you know, I'm, I'm like working a job doing that, trying to put money together to fund my shit. Then when you look my name up, you see the songs that I did only have a couple thousand views, maybe. But the songs they want to push instantly because they put it on all the platforms and all that. 50,000 mm-hmm. all that so people are going to go to that first they're not even going to reach the music i want them to hear because they're not going to listen to it so that was like really bothering me so i was like i was like bro like if this is the case i'll just do it on my own and then of course what, what what really became a problem is then when i started finally doing it on my own and dropping on my own without their permission then they started hitting me with the oh we're going to cease and desist your stuff oh you're you're going against the contract oh well we're and then you know i would get calls of oh you want to sit for four years i could shelf you right now like like just, just talking crazy and stuff whenever you try to like stand up for yourself as an artist and be like well i'm gonna do it this way because i think i know i think i know the way I'm trying to show y'all. I'm trying to get y'all paid, but I think I know the way, and y'all need to trust me. And and then it becomes, and and, and then that's when that's when a lot of the 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 the, the words come out of people's mouth that 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 get people on that you know you know that that might work with some of these other artists that ain't from St. Louis that ain't gonna work with me. You can come to me, start talking that, that little crazy shit because you run something and you have the right to, and you you have the power and control to choke somebody out because you because you got them. You could choke them if you want to, and then you just come over like, oh, I could choke you if I want to. Choke me then. I don't give a fuck. Like, I, I'm that type. Like, that's just me. Like, like you can ask Tech. You can ask Stevie. You can ask Stevie because me and Stevie got into an altercation on tour on some brother shit. Like, now I don't know, like, we fought for it, but on some brotherly shit, you know, I was actually, uh, it was my birthday. It was June 2nd, two years ago. Or, yeah, two years ago, June 2nd. It was my birthday. We were on tour. It was the, uh, the independent grind tour, some shit like that. One of them tours. Me and Stevie, we be talking, you know, I'm drinking this shit. Now, mind you, like, Stevie from Columbia, I'm from St. Louis. Stevie used to be in St. Louis all the time. Frizz, we all from St. Louis, for real. So we vibe and whatever. I'm getting super drunk. Now, my baby mama, this is when my daughter was one years old. She wouldn't even let me talk to my daughter on the phone on, on tour. Like, she wouldn't even let me call her and see her on my birthday. So I'm pissed. I'm, I'm walking around the back drunk and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm in my feelings. Me, personally, you know, did some... This is, I'm yelling and shit out by the by the by the by the trailers and shit. So Stevie come outside and you know he try to wrestle me up. Like now, mind you, you know how big you know you uh you know how big Stevie is. Yeah, Stevie a big dude. You know what I'm saying? Frizz, his hype man. He a big dude. They big dudes. I ain't no big dude. I'm skinny. God damn me. I'm skinny as hell. <laughs> but they come up to me and they're like, bro, what you doing? Why, 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 why? And I'm like, man, fuck that shit. And then Stevie, you know what I'm saying? They like, like on some real shit, hit me up against the trailer. You know what I'm saying? Like ready to like straight. They was both ready to like straight fight me, bro. And I'm like, go ahead, do it then. Do it. Like that's, that's just how I am. Like, I, I like, I don't give a fuck. Like they, they don't matter to me. Like none. So, and that's just off of brotherly shit. So you can imagine when it's somebody that I'm already mad at, that you already like getting on my nerves under my skin. Like me and Travis had gotten into it before video shoots. Like the one, the video shoot problem, me and tech that get off me, me and Trav got into it at that video shoot. Cause I was like, cause dude was talking to me all belittling in front of all the damn video hoes and shit. I'm like, man, don't do that. Like, come on now. Like, 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 and, and it's not me, you know, being hot headed or nothing. It's just me having a level of respect for myself that you're not going to come to me crazy on no disrespectful shit on no type of shape or form towards me. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what type of, what type of, uh, 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 leverage you got on me. Oh, I got your life in this contract. I don't give a fuck. You can kill me like dead ass. That's how I be. You can kill me. 
JL know it too. JL know. Like I'm a I'm just like like dude came up to me one day, like, oh you you crazy as why I fuck with you. Like, yeah, bro. Like, like I I'm not I'm not I'm not malicious, I'm not a gangster, I don't do none of that shit, but I'm not a bitch either. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like nobody over there is. So, you know, it's just like so 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 when it comes down to the point of where it's like I try to stand up for my music and then they try to rah-rah back at me, then it was just in my mind, it's just in my mental state to rah-rah back. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and I mean in the in the meantime too, the second you're not putting out content, you're not making money. Like you know, you're, at the, you're telling you know what you're mentioning before, like you're racking up bills at this point, right? It's like yeah. it's like having a credit card but not having a job, or or your boss saying like, hey, you can't come into work today, and but you're still, yeah. you still got bills to pay, like you're still racking stuff up on the card, and and that's yes. what's happening this whole time is while while they're sitting there messing around and shelving you and not putting product out and ha- not helping you make money, you're continuing to rack up a bill and and getting deeper and deeper into the hole where it it becomes almost impossible or or very now, difficult to you know get out of it at some point. Now listen to this though. Now listen to this. I understand. That as a businessman, they think that they like, oh, we want to make a good plan. So all the money we did spend and the money that we are going to spend is a guaranteed return. As a gambling, as as a gamble, you want to make sure that statistically you do everything you can to make sure that you your return is as is more than your, you know what I'm saying, right. your investment. Right. I understand that. But once again, it's annoying. To, it was just annoying to me that, you know, I essentially it's like I'm a fucking spaceship. I was like, I'm a fucking rocket scientist. And you know what I'm saying? I got the fucking job and they come to me asking me to build them a rocket and I give them I'm trying to give them a rocket. And they're like, no, no, I want this bottle rocket. I'm like, bro, I'm trying to give you SpaceX. Why you keep trying to shoot this <laughs> bottle rocket at people? That's like yeah. literally that's what it is. And that's what it is for all those artists over there. It's not just me. I'm just the only one who don't give a fuck to say it. Well, I ain't gonna say the only one because Godamus don't give a fuck either. That's why I like Godamus too, bro. Godamus is a good ass dude too. Godamus is a cool dude too. But you know, it's just it's just certain people that just don't give a fuck. Like Godamus, he another dude. He don't care. Like he don't care if he's rich, famous, poor. He don't give a fuck. He's just like, fuck it, I just want to do this shit, the real me, the same way I would. I just want to be the real me, that's it. Yeah, and, uh, you know, looking looking back over, you know, I think it was last August, you had you had posted the GoFundMe, which, uh, again, I don't think you would have done at the time if things were going well, right? Like, you were at a place where it's like, hey, I got to do something. Like, I'm trying to continue my career. I'm trying to now, more than ever, do my independent thing. And... It takes help to do that sometimes, right? So, like, well, you, you have to go on me in August. What happened? Like, what made you do that, that at the time? Like, I did that, that. I did that because not only all that shit was going on, but when me and my baby mama split, she had fucked up my living situation to where she got me evicted because she wouldn't leave. Hmm. Now, she wouldn't leave. Now, I got evicted. Now, I got an eviction notice, which makes it extra hard for me to get a crib. You get know what I'm saying? Yep. Because people won't give me a crib without, you know what I'm saying, a co-signer yep. or something. I don't got nobody that can co-sign for me because everybody I know broke. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got bad credit. So I don't got nobody that can co-sign for me. I'm with my daughter. I moved in with my godparents at the time for a second after me and my BM is split so I can get somewhere. I moved in with my godparents at the time so I could try to stack my money together. Turns out a week later, they end up dying. Like they, mm-hmm. they ended up, they, they were dying. I had to find a new place to live when we ain't had nowhere to go. Um, mind you, at this time, all the money I'm making, I still make it myself. I do like I hustle myself up my features, my beats, all that. Like, that's how I was making my money, and I had a job. So I was doing all that to try to provide for my daughter. In the midst of all of this, as soon as COVID hit, my baby mama flew out and moved to LA for about two or three months. Then saying that she just left. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? She up and shook to LA. So I had my daughter at we was doing week on, week off. Once she left, I just had it. So now I'm in a hotel with my daughter, making money from features and a little bit of work that I could do. And at the time, I didn't even have a whip. So I was like, it was extra, extra hard for me to stack money. And I'm paying $1,300 a month at this hotel because I can't get a, 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 you know what I'm saying, a crib because I because mm-hmm. of the eviction notice. So everything was just so hard. I was just like, look, if they could just help me get the, 
the, the, the, the, the money so I can get these lawyer fees. I know that there's a few people that will buy me into a different situation. We, we've kind of gone through the entire journey up until this point, right? So you started with, with, you started with strange music. It didn't quite pan out how I think, honestly, a lot of people would have hoped you went through some stuff. Times were tough, right? Times were tough. Now we're yeah. here, we're here today. Right. Uh -huh. So all, so, so a lot of, a, a lot of where I, I think a lot of the missing pieces to this for a lot of the fans that have, they've been following, man, like whether you were the biggest artist at strange or at strange music or not, the fans have been following the story. And I think since August, people want to know, like since August, since that GoFundMe, what's happened? What, like, where are you now? What are you shooting for? What can people expect coming from you in the future? Well, I will say this much. For one, a lot of people don't understand that uh, a lot of people that like like Darian Saffron on Strange, I had to rebrand myself. So I'm not Darian Saffron anymore. Like I still, Darian Saffron is still on Spotify. It's still everything else. But Darian STL, that's what I go by now. And that's what I drop everything under now on Spotify and everything else. It's a whole different name. It's a whole different entity. So a lot of people that have been checking my stuff out, they don't even know that I've been dropping new things because they don't look for Darian SDO. They just, they just look for Darian Saffron, which is understandable. I get it. But you know, a lot of people should know, like I drop under Darian SDL now, but I might start dropping under Darian Saffron again, just because there's so many people that, you know what I'm saying? Are looking for me under that name. But as of right now, I'm dropping everything under Darian SDL. And really the main thing I've been doing, man, is I've just been doing features and I've been, uh, I've been doing features and I've been working on this new album that I got coming out called Spaceships and these, this mixtape I got coming out called Run the Globe. And one thing I can say of what, what you can expect if you come to my music now is it, it, it's a lot more organic and real than what they were trying to do. It's not like, it's not we just want to party. That's the only song on Strange I didn't write. That's the only song I did not write. That and Fire. I didn't write those two hooks. I didn't like them. Those weren't even my style. It wasn't even me. You're not going to hear shit like that when you come to me now. Like, you're going to hear, like, there's more bars involved. The beats are just realer. It makes you make that grimy face. It's, it's, it's not like what they were trying to paint me as. So, you know, if you come to the music now, it's, and on top of that, it's speaking on real shit. You know, it's not like just saying, ooh, she's so beautiful. Like, it ain't nothing like that. It's like, <laughs> damn, we got to make it out the hood and we going to do this together. Like, you can you can make it if you stay motivated and 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 and, and don't let the system tie you down to to, to mentalities to, to put you in jail and all that stuff. Like, I talk about things like that in my album. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if, that, if that's what you're looking for, you can come find my new music. But I... Um, I, I think that's I think that's great, man. I think that a, a lot of fans and me me included, man. Like I'm, I, I definitely have my type of music that I prefer to listen to. And what you're describing right now, way mm -hmm. more up my alley than just every yeah. song. Every song is like a you know like a sad love song or like a turn up song. Like I, yeah, I think, you know, like it's it's just my shit isn't generic. It's not just a generic song, you know. Like and they was pushing these generic songs, and I was like, bro, like I would not listen to him. Like that's that's what really pissed me off the most. I'm listening to it. I'm like, I want to listen to him. I just want to say thank you for for this opportunity to really get your story out there and for meeting with me so that we can get this out there to the fans and and to people that maybe you know maybe they didn't pay attention to you while you're on Strange Music, but they're gonna come here now to the vlog. They're gonna see this interview. I mean, you seem like a hardworking guy. I mean, for for those of you that don't know what's kind of the background here. I hit this dude up yesterday. He's running all over doing videos and stuff. And we, yeah. we rescheduled to today so we could do this. But that just tells me that he's working. He's serious about his craft. He's serious about his art. He wants to do it yeah. the right way. And just just like, you know, Stevie Stone, like I, you mentioned Stevie Stone and you guys go, you know, back a ways. Watching what he's doing, watching what a lot of other artists have done since they've left Strange, a lot of times, man, more times than not, they end up doing better than what they were doing there just because they don't have the confines that they were in while at Strange. Hey, look at look at Kendrick. Yep. Yep, exactly. Look at Kendrick and J-Rock. Look at look at goddamn me shit. I don't I, I heard Snow the product was under Strange, but then I heard others. So I don't know what Snow was doing, but I guess she would like almost win them or something. I don't know. But you know, and, and, and it's not like I said, man, it's nothing against nobody over there. I love, I got, I even, like I said, I even got love for Travis. 
I just know that we be butting heads because he an alpha male and I am too. On me, I'm a lion in this bitch. I don't give a fuck what nobody think. I come in that motherfucking, I come in the building like a wolf too. I ain't no, I ain't no cub either. I'm a big wolf. I don't give a fuck what nobody think. They might look at me like a little kid, but no, I got a daughter to feed. I'm not playing no games with you. I didn't come here to play this real business, this real life. So yeah, you know, like I got love for Trav, but you know, we just butt heads on that part. Yeah. And I got love for Tech. I just wish he would stand up a little more. I got love for Chris. I got love for JL. I hope JL doing good. I hope Joey doing good. King Iso dope as fuck to me. I think he a great rapper. I didn't get to know him too much, too well because I left around that time when he came on. But mm. I like Iso. Stevie Stone is my brother. You know, Godam is Yubi. I, I met Maze like once before I started doing all that shit. But Maze is cool too. You know, I got love for everybody over there, man. You know, so and Big Scoob. I, I, the Big Scoob is a gangster ass motherfucker. Fuck with school too. I like this energy. You know, I. I, I it, uh Man, Can, it's it's just me, bro. But but yeah, like uh, you know, uh, I hope everybody over there doing good. Um, I'm gonna keep doing me. You know, as of right now, I'm like, bro, like literally, when you say working, like I was doing, I just did this feature sale. You know, like I do sales for my features sometimes on my internet, like on my Instagram. I'll let people know. In February, I did a fifty dollar feature sale. Like it was like fifty dollar February. Okay. Everybody come through, you can get a hook off verse fifty dollars. And I did like sixty features in February. <laughs> I'm not even bullshitting. I, I did God. 60 features. I did 60 features in February. Like and this month, it went up. Uh, each month, I'm going up. So last month, I did $50 February. In March, I'm doing $150 for one, video, for one feature or buy one, get one free for $200. And the next month after that, it's going to be buy one for $200 or buy one, get one free for $350. And the next month after that, it's going to be buy one for $350 or buy one, get two for $500. And it's just going to keep I'm just going to keep raising it up so everybody knows, like, if y'all want to work, y'all going to have to work now because I'm raising my price. <laughs> yeah, better, I don't care what's going on. You better do it now because, yeah, no, for sure, man. I, I think that's I think that's good, though. I mean, you got to do what you got to do to, you know, get by and to get, you know, keep getting music out there, too, man. I mean, the more, you know, I, I used to have, I definitely used to have an opinion about features, um, a very strong opinion about features. And sometimes I felt like doing a ton of features would sometimes dilute the art you know, from that artist and like their catalog. But at the same time, like it's a business and you got to do what you got to do to, to, to keep the business going. And you can invest that money into putting out product for your core fans. That's exactly. going to be better and better. And, and that's better. what I so, do. That's, that's what I use it for. It's like, like a lot of people ask me, like, you don't even care if he's whack. Like you're just doing the feature. I'm like, bro, this money that I'm going to get from doing this feature is going to fund the video for the next single I got. And it's going to fund the, the business to push that to make my brands where I could say, oh, you want to feature 500. Oh, you want to feature a thousand. And this is going to keep growing. I'm investing into my brand. You understand what I'm saying? My brand is what I invest into. So a lot of people come to me as well. And they're like, a lot, you know, this one dude came to me. He was like, why should I pay you for a feature? And, you know, I sold him this shit with tech, but it wasn't even that. Like, I don't even care about that shit. Like, I, I usually don't even show people, oh, I did shit with tech. That's not what I come to sell myself on. I just show my music. But you know, it's like, uh, he was like, why should I buy a feature from you? I'm like, bro, check this out. If you buy a feature from me, all right, you essentially buying it at this stock price. You 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 bought my feature. Let's say I did do the feature for $50. Boom, you bought the feature for $50. You spent that money on me, and you like, damn, well, where my money go? Well, now that you spent your money on me, that $50 then is going to reinvest into my brand that I put, and I'm not fucking the money off. I'm going to reinvest in it, rebuild my brand. So now when my brand builds, and now my stock is essentially worth more than the $50 hook that you spent on, you spent $50 for a hook, but now essentially your hook is worth even if you wanted to sell it to somebody else, that hook could be worth 250 500 now because I made my brand bigger off of the money that you gave me. Now what you got is worth more. You get what I'm saying? It's like a stock. It's like stock value. You got to look at it like, do you believe the artist that you are buying this feature from, from right now will be worth more later? You know? Yeah, that makes and sense. And if you believe that, you if you believe my artistry is worth that, you know, I don't like people to come to me to get mad when I say I charge because, bro, what the fuck did you think I do this shit for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's dumb as hell. What the hell type of shit is that? Oh, you charge. Oh, I just wanted to do a song with you, bro. Oh, well, I mean, I just want to eat, but I can't go to McDonald's and be like, oh, I just wanted a burger, bro. I just, <laughs> just want to get one. I thought y'all was giving them out. Like, what the fuck type of shit is that? But, you know, but that's the circle of life. It's a circle of business. You know, you you, you invest yourself into that business. Nine times out of ten, that money going to come back to you. For sure, for sure. Uh, one one last thing here. So you mentioned uh, some projects that were coming. 
Do you have yeah. some dates on the, you, you mentioned a mixtape and you also mentioned an album. Which one's coming first and when can we expect to see? Run the Globe. Projects? Run the Globe, the mixtape is going to come first, and I expect that to be out within a week. So y'all might want to go to my Instagram and check that ASAP. But the Spaceships album, I plan on putting that out in about a month or two. In about okay. a month or two. But the videos that are coming out from the album are dropping all month, all next couple months. So y'all make sure that y'all just stay tuned. Y'all y'all will see it. Y'all just go to my Instagram and get tapped in. Y'all, y'all be good with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I think a lot of people are, and uh, I'm going to be paying attention to see how you're moving over the next couple of months here. And, uh, you know, dude, I wish nothing but the best for you, especially now that you're kind of on your you're on your independent thing right now and trying to carve out your own lane by yourself. And that's a that's an uphill battle, man. That's an uphill battle. So you definitely got my support. I know there's going to be a bunch of other people that are going to be supporting you along the way too. So I hope it goes well, man, and I wish you nothing but the best. Do you have any... Uh, any last words for uh, the fans that may be watching this video or anyone else? Fans watching this, you know, if you got a dream, you just got to keep going towards it. Don't let nobody say that they can stop you or block you because nowadays can't nobody block nothing. Even when the clouds block the sun, the sun is still there shining. So, you know, like you can't be blocked. You know, you can't be stopped. Um, you're only as uh, powerful as you allow yourself to be because we already got the power in us. It's just about unlocking the power and letting that shit come out into manifestation. You know, I'm a real spiritual motherfucker. I, I, I've done some, some. I've taken some trips, you know what I'm saying, in my life. So uh, it's really about having a strong mind and uh, keep fighting off them diseases. Don't let no type of COVID get to you. Fuck all that shit. You know, just stay strong-minded and you're going to be all right. I think that's great advice, man. And I, I hope this I hope this COVID thing clears up too so you can get out there and get some shows going and get some get some touring going, man. Cause that's that I know for sure is what the people are looking forward to as well. So Hey, yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what though. Real smart business, man. Here, you know, if you can't come to my live show, you could definitely catch me live on my on, on like tagged or something, goddamn me. And and what I do is uh if the top person come on my live, I do like sometimes I go live and I'll be like, if anybody want me to sing something for them, I sing for them live right there. You know, nice. you know, just uh depending on who the top, you know, whoever the top gifter is in the live, they they get a uh they get a free request, whatever they want me to do. Everybody keep their head up, man. I appreciate the time and it's good talking to you, bro. But yeah, I'm yeah, about man. to I'm about to I'm about to step out myself and get some more work done. We like I said, we editing these videos right now. So we got about five more videos coming. And uh and and, and you know, shout out to Trav. And I hope he's doing all right. Shout out to Tech. I hope he's doing all right. You know, just, you know, just speaking real shit. That's all it is. There ain't nothing, ain't nothing more or less to it. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it, man. I wish you all the best. Thank you, everybody, yeah. for watching. My name's Joe K. It's just another day in the underground. See you guys next time.